Three, two, one. Hi everyone, you're very, very welcome to Rehearsal Space, will we call it that, as well as the cosiest room in Tume as it stands at the moment. What oh, a gorgeous yes. place. We're upstairs. Do you know what we'll call it? Upstairs at Leo's. Leo's. Yeah. yeah. It's I a bit like Daryl's house when they yeah. do the gigs from Daryl's house. We played there. What? Me and Davey played there. Yeah. Wait, okay, now yeah. this is a nugget I wasn't expecting. This came out. <laughs> talk to me. You have to tell me about that. Yeah, we went over and we did a duo, a little tour of America. Uh, well, not of all America, but one of the gigs we played was Daryl's house. That's absolutely unreal. It's a great yeah. team. And, like, obviously, it looks fairly big from the cam- camera angles that they use. Is it as big as it looks, or is it a small, tidy, shed-like area, or what is it? Um, the, the, the part of it we played in, I'm not sure that's where they do the broadcast from. It was okay. like, it'd be... A, uh, maybe twice the size as Campbell's Tavern kind of thing. All yeah. oh, right, okay. So it's fairly tidy, fairly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. What a way to start off the, the show. The camera angles are great in it, though, as you said. Absolutely. Right? Like, looks like Crow Park. Do I, do, <laughs> do I look big in this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, look at lads. Thanks a million, Davy and Leo from the Saw Doctors. Um, thanks a million for, for, for having us down, and it's great to be here with you. And I suppose we're all here in Shum and around the country and around the globe riding on this wonderful success that you have achieved since you, you got back together over the last little while. Let's just go down to it here for a second. From the warm-up gigs mm, in yeah. Kilconnelly, which I know you love. Legend, uh, legend. Very, very, yeah. very well. Amazing gigs at Electric Picnic. You had Manchester, New York, Boston, Galway, Dublin, Glasgow, the festivals in Glastonbury, just in case you forgot any of the stuff that you did already, right? Uh, Wickham, Mosley there, and not so long ago, the Apollo over in London over the last while. What a phenomenal year. And Claire Morris. Of course, Claire Morris in the middle of it all as well. That was just after Kilconley, if I'm yeah. not really mistaken. What a year. It's hard to believe, it's hard to believe all that happened in one year. Now, the, the way you ran through it there, because every single one of those gigs were, was a highlight, weren't they? In yeah. their own way, like they were just highlights. But there's such, the, the, there was such a, a want, as you know, for you to get back together. Oh, there, yeah. there really, I'm sure you felt it yourselves. I know we were kind of talking away and saying, would there be murmurs? Would it yeah. be happening? Could it be happening? Could the docs come back? And I'm sure you kind of felt that, that, that need and that want that we all had for you to get back. Uh, and it's great that you have come back because you've brought a lot of excitement. Um, when, how did the phone call come about? Or was there a phone call? How did it come about that you were getting back together? We were tip-tapping around anyway, weren't we? Yeah. It just it just fell back together again. We started getting together and making up a few little tunes and thinking uh, it'd be nice to do something with them. And yeah. then it just it just fell back together very naturally. There was no plan at all. As always, the the best things that happen are never planned, as you know, yeah. as everybody knows. So it well, was just lucky. And yeah, we never really like there was talk like oh this is the comeback, but we never went, we didn't really go anywhere as hmm. such. You know, but it's just that we didn't go touring. That that um, period of COVID was an awful period of time, yeah. you know. And a lot of the gigs wouldn't have suited us mm. at the time anyway. So, you know, as soon as, as, soon as uh, everything started to break out again, we were like, let's go out and do it. You know what I mean? I suppose it was a bit like the Eagles. You didn't really split up, really. You just took a vacation. That's exactly it. Well, I'd always be um, watching bands that used to retire and and then come back and retire and come back and it's like I was thinking we'll never do that so no. even if we were never going playing again and we decided we were never going playing again we wouldn't say it I wouldn't have said it because no. <laughs> <laughs> then they'd be saying oh, the, choice. the comeback tour <laughs> then it's the farewell tour and the other comeback tour yeah. you know we didn't want to ever do that like yeah and it was great like you have a fantastic band and I have said it on social media I've written it on social media and it's very plain to see there that in my opinion you're the best live actor in the country at the moment. You, you really are. Your tightest tuppence, your sound, mm. your lighting, your showmanship, everything about you is tight. We have a great gang around us as well, yeah. you see. Like, all those lads are just spot on. And they're all great musicians. And I know it looks like we're having a bit of steam and that, and that but it's all tight and we did a fair bit of rehearsal now didn't we we did a lot of rehearsal which yeah. we never used to do before because no. we used to do so many gigs yeah. rehearsal didn't really make sense yeah but because we had to get back up to speed fairly lively we did a lot of rehearsal yeah. and it worked it did work and you have a great uh, background sound, sound team obviously you know the, the back line as well as yeah. the front of house it really is it's incredible like clockwork. stuff the whole thing runs yeah. like clockwork it looks a bit from outside it might look a bit willy-nilly or a bit 
lakes like but it's not but it's not no it's it's run awful when everyone does their their little piece and that's what makes the whole package yeah you know did you envisage and i know we spoke about the whole idea of the excitement of you come back coming back but did you envisage the success and the demand for tickets that is currently out there not at all did you did you see that no i mean we had no idea all you could do is put a show on sale the Kilconley ones were small, so obviously they'd be okay for selling. And then we went as far as Claire Morris, which was bigger, and that uh, went very well. And then we booked a gig in England at the Wickham Festival, and that went very well. And then we got offers to do some of the gigs we used to do, like the Manchester Apollo. Mm. And once they went on sale, then you could see that people were eager to come and see Demand was there, yeah. wasn't it, yeah? No, it's probably gone now. They'd probably be thinking, sure, I saw them last year, no? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't think, I'll be totally honest, I don't think you can see the Saw Doctors once. <laughs> I, know, I don't yeah. think yeah. because there's an appetite there's a there. Group of people disagree with you. No, <laughs> and I mean that in the loveliest way. As you know, I, I think you need to come back because it's such a show that I think you'd nearly miss something, or you just get caught up in the moment of something, because there's a lot of nostalgia there. So the thing about it is, lots of people are thinking about life and back and then when they heard yeah. the songs for the first time. But there really is a demand, and uh, to think that you know you have the big top next year on the 27th of July. That July next year, lads, is <laughs> it's oh, a different level of yeah. madness uh, between Manchester, three uh, gigs over in the States, then you have, well, the 12th and 13th in uh, Boston, Boston yeah. then you're in uh, New York, and I'm then you have headache, Chicago. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Do you know, I'll be your Google uh, diary for the yeah. year. But, like, and the demand is unreal. The 12th is already sold out over yeah. in, in Boston, so it's crazy I was thinking stuff. of getting a flight kiss from myself for July. Yeah, just lock me away then for the week. <laughs> Open it up again. Open like, it up when you're needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously you're back on the 27th, back to Galway, yes. home ground for the the big top gig. But the demand is there, and people are are, are loving it all as well. So you're you're kind of caught up. You can't believe the demand that's I know, out there. Yeah, it's a roller coaster again. You see, yeah. it reminds me a little bit of when it all kicked off for us. Mm. It's not. It's just intense. It's yeah. so intense, like you know. And how are you feeling now? Okay, the 7th of September, 91, right? You were back then 32 and a half years ago or so, roughly around that. Do you feel differently now as a band than back then? Are you more chilled out, more at ease than the madness that happened back then? It's a cliche, but we've seen an awful lot since then. So, like, you know, you kind of, you kind of, I still get the thrill, though. Yeah, you know, the buzz is there. That thrill is still there. I mean, if it wasn't, there'd be no point in doing it. But I still get the, the kick out of it. It's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you think of the West Awake this time around, it was yeah. very family orientated up the town. It was absolutely brilliant to see Legend. the festival yeah. atmosphere here in town. Leo, did you feel the same gooey wooey feelings in your <laughs> tummy uh, the weekend of August the 19th and 20th than you did back? in uh, 1991. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's exactly the same. We're, <laughs> we're all different people after are, yeah. that amount of years. It was a dangerous undertaking because the original West Awake had been such a success and I always thought it would be nice to try and repeat it and get it somewhere close to it, but you could never really expect to repeat it exactly or repeat it at the, at the same level. But I have to say, the, this year's one came very close, and it was as close as it was closer than I could have hoped for. Yeah. Mm. That that it would have been such a success, and that people would have enjoyed it so much and taken a, a, um, just a, a responsibility towards it and and a real warm feeling about it all. Let's move on to St Charlotte's College Field first of all, oh, yeah. where the Wellingtons. We weren't having a Wellington throwing competition. No. We had a, a, a Wellington wearing competition up there. Um, first of all, from its inception or whatever, it was a great idea and still is a wonderful idea. And the tent went up. Um, I know Keith Chrisham here in town had his drone out and he took some great snaps. Mighty, yeah. It looked amazing. The town was buzzing. The crack was good. The tent looked good. And then the rain came. So what was the story? What was your feeling when the rain arrived? Well, there was never any question that we would do it open air. We just wouldn't trust doing open air in the west of Ireland. And especially when you're <laughs> inviting people to come to Tume, you, you feel there's an extra onus on you to be hospitable to them and try and keep them dry. So at least we said, well, this is why we got the big top. And we had it. And it, 
it, uh, it, it served its purpose. It did. It was it was the electric picnic big top, wasn't it? Y yeah. That's the yeah, one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But it looked amazing from the sky. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah, it absolutely. was incredible stuff. <laughs> then, obviously, people were going out. Arthur McDonough made an absolute fortune. <coughs> uh, and the uh, uh, Luke O'Brien's made a fortune. Pat Lane made a fortune. And every other ar agricultural business Gormley. around it. One, the of the <laughs> one of the downsides of this <laughs> West Wake is, why didn't I think of that yeah. Yeah. before, you know? <laughs> Eamon Garrity's given out for ages about it. He said, yeah. Sham, if I was only in on the game. I would have been in Tenerife for the last two weeks. <laughs> Chico Kelly was telling me he was delivering the post on the Monday of, of the country and yeah. he said you could tell which houses had been in at the West of Wake with all the Wellingtons and Boots left outside That's the door. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And you know what? I got a, a pink pair because it was the only ones that was left, right? Yeah. Arthur threw them at me and he said, Shem, if you have the bagels yeah. to wear them. Wear them, yeah. <laughs> he said, you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you shouldn't ask me if I have the bagels. I, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Bad idea. <laughs> then let's go on to the gigs, the two nights, the 19th and the 20th of August. Both very, very special nights for lots Lots of reasons, lot of nostalgia, a few tears knocking about the area from people that may not be with us now that were with us back then or whatever. Yeah. What was the feel like backstage listening to the, the tent building up? Yeah. What was it like? An incredible atmosphere. I mean, and the and killer thing is both nights were, they were spectacular, but they were different as well. Do you know that kind of way? I mean, we did the Saturday night and I spent, I spent the whole next day, Sunday, thinking, can we get this as good as we did last night? Mm. Because when you do a really good one and you've got another one of course, going, you're yeah. thinking to yourself... Second you know, night syndrome. It can, it yeah, can all, you yeah, know yourself, yeah. but it went off dream again. It did, you know yeah. I mean? The camera's there, obviously, on the on the Saturday night, and they threw another atmosphere into the yeah. room with the, with the boom going and, across. And you're gorgeous. a tiny bit... When, when that's happening as well, though, you're a tiny bit just uptight. Yeah. Because, you you know, you're looking at the... The boom going, and you're going, oh, jeez, there I am, you know, don't pick your nose now when that's going past. <laughs> scratch your arse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, no one scratch oh, your arse. don't do middle. anything, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you get that kind of thing. And then the Sunday night was almost like another, it was re a release, like, just yeah. to let it fly, and, you know. It was gorgeous. And in all fairness, it must have been lovely for both of you as well to look out and see... Oh, all faces. familiar faces yeah. in front Incredible. that uh, brought back memories and people that uh, it's like a good wedding yeah you know people you haven't seen in a long they're time they're such a one they're there yeah, yeah. they're there <gasps> you know that must have been a great feeling oh, it was legend it was great to see and I, I was glad that they saw us doing well yeah you know that kind of way I'm glad we didn't make a hames of it like not <laughs> at all but both <laughs> you know? ye, your pipes were absolutely we were on song excuse the pun flying. you oh. were flying yeah. <gasps> Your vocals are just incredible, sure, and everything, everybody spoke about that. Everything helped, like even the adrenaline rush helped, mm. and it was just, you know, we were we were in great health, let's, yeah. let's say. <laughs> and even your walk out onto the stage, I lads, know. Yeah. you know, I, I love a bit of choreography. Can't try and get as stupid as you possibly can. <laughs> well, it was absolutely brilliant, <laughs> and we loved it. You couldn't call that choreography <laughs> now. No, in all fairness, it was brilliant, and it was yeah. great fun. Even yourself standing up on the on the, on, on the, on the, the box of the speaker or whatever, and you're doing your thing, and you're playing your solo. That's another thing to frighten the life out of me. I'm afraid of heights. Well, and I'll tell you one thing. The great thing about it is only ye have seen that yeah. from your angle. Yeah, yeah. And that's a memory, I'd say, that, that you'll always hold, dear Leo. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a, it was a special occasion. The, like you're asking about the two different nights. For me, there were two totally different nights. Mm. Yeah. The first night, it was kind of pressure and it was a huge occasion. And there was all this actually happening after thinking about it, would it happen for probably a year? Mm. And there it was. And there was a, a sense of... It, it being a big occasion and we had to play the songs as well that kind of a way <laughs> yeah and, and we did yeah but the second night then was like a, it was more like well that's a, the occasion now is dealt with mm. and now we're a band doing a few songs that people like mm. and it felt an awful lot more relaxed than the second night it did it felt Sunday night felt oh. like a family night yeah. it, it felt like you know the people that wanted to be there yeah. uh, in, in, in support of you as well as yeah. there to listen to you yeah. uh, were all there including Brilliant. your daughter she was indeed she, she caught a she came over to Castlefield in Manchester and she was at the side of the stage watching the crowd and she afterwards she said to me what's it like to be up there doing that and I kind of thought I just find out I said, yourself. I said, yeah and, and then I kind of thought that I was trying to think of a little piece for her and there was a little piece in one of the songs yeah 
that she could do. So she came down, rehearsed with us, did it. No problem to her at all. I was amazed with her that she... And she's at the side of the stage waiting to go on and she's doing all the shapes and all yeah. that. It's great fun. But she can do it. Oh, yeah, she's she able can for do it. it. But she'll never forget that now. Like, no. that's, that's a life that's a memory, memory you know what yeah, I mean? It really is. Yeah. I noticed as well, and I don't want to go too much into it, but you got emotional on the stage when, when she came out and she sang. It was a, absolutely lovely. I got lovely a bit of a crack it. up there, but I held, it, I held it like I held you it did. fairly well together. It was like fumbling the ball, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. just held In front on of the goal. In front of the goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. just held on to it. But it was lovely. It was, ah, yeah. it was a great moment. Yeah, because you know when when you're like when you're doing rehearsals, you're doing everything like that, and you think this is the moment though it was yeah. coming to her moment, yeah. and the nerves, my nerves were just on edge, mm. and then she delivered, and I went, fair play to you, and <laughs> not know? a bother. You could no. see it in her face that she <laughs> yeah. was so chill, pointing at friends, Absolutely. she had friends up the front and stuff. She's pointing That's at class. Them, going all this. So she was a superstar. Of course yeah, she was. Yeah. She went into school the next week. I swear to God, yeah. well, not not you know. And uh, she went in, she was embarrassed. She went in the, the do- front door and the, there's all the kids gather in the hall before they go to the classes. Yeah. She got a round of applause uh, of everyone of in the did. place. It was like... Isn't that lovely? <laughs> That's so nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Even the, the, the post gigs then, obviously you went for a few gargles, as I say, afterwards. I say there was some lovely words spoken afterwards, apart from the, the support of you doing it, but I'd yeah. say a lot of people were talking about old times and stuff like that, Leo. Well, the whole weekend was... Um, an opportunity for people to come home. People love an excuse to, to, to come home to Tume, and a lot of people love an excuse to come to Tume that have never been here before or yep. have visited before. So when you put on a, an event like that, it gathers all that together, and that obviously creates a great buzz among people and themselves chatting with each other. And I just heard nothing but positive feedback for weeks and weeks afterwards. It was like people were delighted and. You know, it's it's great to have have been able to do it. But the whole the whole thing was a great showcase as well. The boys themselves. It just showed it was yeah. great that Tume had yeah. this was a Tume showcase All and the it was like were local. You know. But the support acts were brilliant. just a fluke. <laughs> oh, no, but, but, but I think, in all fairness, I know there was a time where there was 19 or 20 garage bands that were playing that never got a gig. We spoke about yeah. that in the last podcast, too. But it's wonderful to think that there was such a showcase in the town that did highlight the likes of Darrow D, the While Aways, all these yes. guys, you know yeah. what I mean? Dylan there doing his thing on the guitar. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's a fantastic thing to think that they got the opportunity to play in front of 5,000 people. Isn't that people. wonderful? Yeah. They, you know. And there was also the 3,000 people went through the mall to see all the, yeah. all the acts right. down there. That was yeah. a great gig. I was down there to that as yeah. well. Yeah, Julie I, well, McHugh and the crew. Didn't get there, so. She's brilliant. She she's a phenomenal yeah. uh, young lady. She yeah. really is. And she has a great grow for the town as well and the people yeah. in the town. So, so all, all of the stuff that happened yeah. around it was very important as well. It, yeah. it was tied in with Creative Places Tomb and they, mm. they used it as a showcase for the stuff. Yeah. Because they got a bit hampered with, with, with COVID. They didn't get to do uh, yeah. you know as much in public as they would have liked and then you had the spark catchers as well with Mighty and the crew yeah. up there and they, they were just absolutely do you know what Jojo. I was amazed with, uh, with that is how quickly all that came together yeah. so, I mean I didn't know I coming up to the gig I didn't know what was going on until it started to happen mm. how quick were people to be able to get all that stuff together I think that's incredible it reminds me of Wayne's world yeah. call them and they'll come and they'll that? come that was, yeah exactly <laughs> I know it was very very special and I think everybody everybody loved it and they're still talking about it and will over the Christmas as yeah. well so there you go your music reminds me a lot of Nirvana and right. I'll tell you the reason why because if you look at any young person walking around the town I can guarantee you that somebody walking down Tum at the moment with a Nirvana t-shirt yeah and they're yeah. young Ye have this appeal <laughs> to young and old. It may come from mom and dad playing vinyls, playing the CDs, playing the tapes at home, but there seems to be that grow from young and older yeah. for the Saw Doctors. It's amazing. Can you explain it? Well, it's amazing that young, young people, young kids and that, they wouldn't have any qualms about throwing on a Saw Doctors t-shirt. That, that's a great sign. Do you know what I mean? Like, you meet someone that's 18, 19, and the Saw Doctors t-shirt on them, you're like... Oh. Well, what can I say about that, you know? But it says a lot about the band. Yeah. It says a lot about history. It yeah. says a lot about your music. Yeah. We were doing a gig in America, and it was a yeah. small little duo gig, and this barmaid, she was about 20, she was lovely. She came, she came up after the gig and she said, can I have a picture with you? So I, we said, no bother. She stood in between us. 
and uh, we were thought, oh geez, we're we're very uh, very attractive older men, you know. Yeah. So she handed the camera to her friend, and she said, oh my God, she said, my granny is going to be so excited. <laughs> 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 Funny that you mentioned it. I had the same thing on radio there. I seen a young one texting in one day and she won a prize and she was fresh and she was young and a bit of crack on radio and all that. And I said, and is that ticket for you now? Not at all. She said, my grandmother loves you. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you get yeah. the groove, like yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but it is fantastic that you have the international appeal. Like, there's a lot of people. No more than the N17, the amount of people that that has touched yeah. uh, over the years with the emigration and so forth. And we've spoken about that. It's been on TV. It's been on RT. It's been on the radio and the whole lot. But there is that grow for N17 and what it has done for people, and it, and it is in people's hearts. And that I think is a m- massive amount of your international appeal that people still resonate with. Well, you know something i mightn't be at home but you know what i do have in the corner yeah i have a vinyl of the docks yes or i have a cd of the docks i'll throw it on that's my medicine for today yeah yeah it's a, isn't it a lovely feeling it's to incredible. think that it's you've incre- done this speaking of the n17 that's an incredible song entirely because it come around a full circle mm. and it's probably arguably the biggest song in the gig now isn't it you know it's like yeah once you start playing that it's like mm. people go no Our gig is kind of like a sing song it's like mm. a which is doesn't happen as much as it used to. People used to go to mass and sing together communally, and people used to Father go Carton. to the pubs and <laughs> Father Carton is yeah. right. Monsignor Morden. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see you in the confession box now in a second. Know, yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the same You're thing used to happen more often in pubs. Those two things aren't as popular as they used to be. Yeah. And it's just there's less chance for people to experience communal things together. Mm. And uh, as then there used to be, so uh, a gig is one place where you can do that. Yeah, but it says a lot about you too as songwriters because people can only sing what's written on paper, and I think that it's testament to ye as a duo and further afield of people that have written songs in collaboration with ye. Yeah, yeah. Um, it says a lot about them too and the art of songwriting. I think it's a, a very important thing that needs to be spoken well, about. David Gro- sorry, go on. sorry, j- sorry. The, the the songs are the stars, really, mm. of, the, of the whole show, you know what I mean? You can sing... I think you, anyone could go out and sing N17 to a crowd, and the crowd will sing along. Yeah. So it's kind of the songs that are the stars, really, which is, mm. which is great to have those weapons, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But as well as, like, uh, clever riffs, you know... Yeah, just kind of... You know, grabbing an old fiddle back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's it, like, you know, it's, you know. It, it really is very, very important. Yeah. And, uh, David Grohl said that when there's a thousand people at their gig, or any gig, and there's a song going on, there's a thousand different videos going on in people's heads. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great picture, and that's... If songs work, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think the power of music is is phenomenal. It's amazing. Like you can it can bring you back to you can nearly smell the place you were. Yeah. You can see the place you were. Vivid images really come into your head when you have when you have music and powerful music. Yeah, you know? and you hear just hear that, and you and as you said, it just memories just come back. And oh, oh, they really do. Yeah, yeah, they really do. But you're enjoying it at the moment. I think you're in a great place. Great. <laughs> you're happy. You're riding this wonderful crest of the wave oh, it's at the moment. Fantastic. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Well, you could not enjoy it really. Yeah. It's it's a real privilege to be able to play in the situations where we're playing in the venue. Haunts around on the stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, with the crew that we have, with the crowds that we have, with the people that arrange everything for us, it's an amazing privilege. And if you couldn't enjoy that, you shouldn't really be doing it. Well, I, I want to get to that for a second because um, Ollie Jennings is, is, is a great guy, as we know, and he's a gentleman to go along with it and, and the whole lot. But there's a wonderful team there as well. Your, your advertisement team are brilliant. And do you know what they are? Clever. Yeah. It's a very, very clever organization. I think the way that you announce gigs, I think the way that you uh, promote gigs is a really clever machine. And I don't want to call it a machine because that almost minimizes what I'm I talking about. Yeah, yeah. But you do have a clever background. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, it's like a, it's like a cottage industry that's really well run, mm-hmm. I think. You know, like, like the time that we, we bought our albums back off Warner Brothers mm. in the early 90s, started our own record company, and then got to number six in the British charts with our own um, cottage industry. Yeah. You know, and, and when, you got, when we got that, it gave confidence then to, to us to be able to go. You know, we don't go over the top with 
advertising as such and stuff like that. But as you said, we do. Ollie's very clever, and he, he does is it, clever. He does. He does it enough. He knows. Yeah. And he's very, the one thing about him as well is he's very thankful for yeah. the amount of, you know, when people do something, you always feel that you're respected for doing it. And yeah. that's what we love about Ollie yeah. as well. You always feel very respected. He's a workaholic. Ollie. He is, yeah. <laughs> he is. But he loves it as well. You yes. can see from the videos that Ricky puts up, he's yourself and himself him, just yeah. kind of having the slag or <laughs> pushing him along a the floor. There's just this really lovely, uh, magical, yeah. as you said, communal uh, effort yeah. uh, involved in all that as well, which is, which is really fantastic. Yeah. Um, moving on from there then as well, um, obviously you have big gigs coming up next year and uh, they're, they're humongous gigs. The Galway International Arts Festival next year is probably one of the highlights yeah. of that as well. Um, as the gigs have been announced, and I know today is a big day as well with the, with the announcement of the Galway International Arts Festival um, uh, gig or whatever, do you get the, the fuzzy feelings when you think of that as well, that what's upcoming? Yeah. Thinking of almost like... Christmas next year, for that matter. As the undertone said, here comes the summer. Yeah. You know, like, so it's great to see all these things going up, but you look, you look at a distance from them at the moment because everything, everything we do is done, like our next gig now, mm. that's what I'm, we're looking at. We're kind of like a football team. I was just about to say, you know what I mean? game to game, yeah. Game to game and then plan for the, you know, Mm. It's lovely to know that that's out there now for us. Yeah, you know, and that the tickets are going well, which yeah. is which is fantastic. It's lovely to mean? play up to a full crowd. We were only saying that pre-interview um, today. The buzz of the crowd out in the audience, the energy, the yeah. and I know I know well that the the whole band never gives less than a hundred percent. So everything is left on the stage when we, when we walk off at the end. Yeah, we do the bow. It's kind of like. How much stay down here for a while? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take take the adoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it's great. Going on to the media for a second, as you as you we spoke about before in our previous podcast, um, you got a bit of stick back in the day, back in oh, nineteen ninety one. Uh, obviously, until things changed, yeah. uh, changed your lives completely. The media this time, they're a very different media. I think I think the like hot press are writing some great stuff about you. The papers are writing great stuff. We're reading them uh, on social as well as... Um, how does that feel for you now? We're stunned. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing feels very natural at the moment. Mm. We're probably famous enough as we are now, you know, in, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. we, we probably do have to add to the stock of it a bit and do something new for people to, to just keep, to keep it current. But at the moment, we have people that want to come and see us. Mm. And over the years, we've built up a trust with the audience that when they come to see us, they expect a certain uh, yeah. kind of a thing. And yeah. we're able to deliver that kind of a thing. And when we came back at it, our ambition was that we would be as good as we were, if, if not better. Because we didn't want people saying, they were good, but I prefer them now the last time I saw them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I just think your arrangement, the, the music arrangement, it's fabulous. Uh, Anto there as well, throwing the oh, lovely... Yeah. Like, there's some really fabulous harmonies. The the arrangement of the music is gorgeous. It really is classic. We worked stuff. a lot. We worked hard on a lot of them things now. Like, mm. everything you mentioned there, I mean, Anto is like letting a dog off a leash when you let him go. Oh, he's having off a ball. He goes, like, yeah. you know. And uh, just we worked on harmonies and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, and and, it, and it, it, um, it 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 works for people when they hear it. Yeah, um, coming at them, you know. But the great thing about it is not only do you have musicians up on the stage, you have great singers as well. Oh, you know, yeah. Mr. Merrigan there is well able to fire out a line. Yeah. Of course, you have Noli, you Dirty. have Kieran. Yeah. You know, like, do you know what? You have you have a great gang there. Great Tommy singer. himself oh, as yeah. well. Your own D Tommy, Big Don Deleros himself. Yeah. Isn't you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like everybody yeah. can throw out yeah. a note. Yeah. Yeah. And it really... Not to mention himself. Oh, sure. Look, well, yeah. that, that goes without saying <laughs> the two ye. You know, what yeah. everybody's wondering at the moment is, though, yeah. where is Leo getting his castle hackets? Where is he getting his jackets? Because everybody thinks that he has Rod Stewart's um, closet 
I don't, know, I don't know whether he wants to reveal it or not. But All right, it's, okay. I can tell you it's definitely not him getting them anyway. Well, is that it? Yeah. I can tell you that much. Would there be a female <laughs> counterpart that uh, kits him out mm, now and again? That going. Rod sends me jackets as well. Does he? He does, yeah. yeah. I'd say he does, yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, some of the jackets I've seen in Shoom, I'll tell you, are I unbelievable. They're legend, they aren't they? have to be seen. Yeah. You're definitely seen. Yeah. Yeah. You're be definitely be seen. Be safe, be seen. Be safe, be seen. Do you remember seen. back in the old days when the, f- the f- coloured telly came in at the first... And you'd have to turn it down a small bit. It's like, yeah. Jesus, that's blind to me. That's... <laughs> and you're standing beside him. Yeah, and I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> no more than watching snooker in a black and white I television know, years yeah, ago. Yeah. It was tough work, like, you know, it wasn't easy. <laughs> but look, lads, it's, it's absolutely brilliant to catch up with you because it must be, what is it, nearly two years ago since we had our last podcast. God, um, yeah. Is it yeah, that long ago? It would be, yeah. Wow. It would be when we sat down with the fig rolls and the cup of tea on the mall. Yeah. And we had a great time. And that, that was, was during great, COVID. Steve. Yeah. During COVID at the That's time right. as well. We were all sitting away from each other, weren't we? We were. We were. Yeah. And, and we, didn't, we didn't speak at all about reunion or anything no. like that. We, we just spoke about the moment and, and we wanted to signify the moment of the 30th uh, anniversary. So that is two years ago. Genius. Um, yeah. And it's great to see where you've come. Yeah. Um, we're relishing in your success. We it's really great. are. Yeah. It's great. Uh, we wish you continued success. Fantastic. Uh, for the future as well. It really is great. Great to see media behind you, everybody else behind you, the band and everything else. Is, it's great. And safe journey on your travels because you, you are going overseas. And yes, um, just take it nice and easy. I will, of course. No problem. And the one thing I want to do is wish you both and the band and your management and everybody else a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and happy Christmas. Same to yourself. And Same. thanks, Ronan, for all your support. Yes, for indeed. Every every year, uh, all the time, you're always there helping us and well, giving us a G up. Thanks a million. Well, you're very accommodating in the sense that you can well imagine there's times you're trying to grab people and do this, that and the other. We're here just to be, let people know it is nine o'clock in the morning and the lads have made, made themselves available to me. Yeah. Uh, and Dylan is present as well. So, Dylan, thank you very much indeed for all your support along the line as well. And Dylan, it's good. It's good, good. We put the handsome block behind the absolutely behind the camera, isn't it? Uh, you see, that's how. <laughs> that's how to do. But the, do you know what? He's beaming from behind the, ca- the course, camera. Of course, I so can feel it. Right. I can he's feel bad. it. Well, not at all. As I always say, Gold Bay FM's uh, support will always be behind you, and oh, we're fantastic. enjoying playing your music. And I cannot tell you the amount of times we do get in text to play a doc song. Of course, of course, yeah. And. Uh, I'll have, to st- I'll have to stop doing that. So. Uh, yeah. we'll, well, we'll make sure the royalties come your way. Grant, I promise I'll stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How many phones do you have, Sharon? All rakes. <laughs> <laughs> but not at all. Take it easy. Safe travels because I know uh, you're in Dublin tomorrow. You're Dublin in the, the tomorrow Olympia. And then Glasgow next week. There you go. There we are. And a bit of a festive break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Santa Claus. As always. Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He's coming too. Yeah, I have to. I have to accommodate him as well. You see. Well, there you go. Yeah, you have yeah. a busy. You have a busy household. Believe yeah. me. So oh, look yeah. at. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and a happy new year. Talk to you soon, lads. Ho 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 ho. <laughs>